The Porter Institute is a group of about 80 scientists at Imperial, all of whom are interested in the use of plants, um, uh, in, in making fuels, energy, materials and, and chemicals. And the Porter Alliance is just the, the Porter Institute's interaction with a, a number of, of other institutions, which include Rothamsted Research, Ibers in Aberystwyth and John Innes, and also some individual scientists at Southampton, uh, Cambridge and York, all of whom actually, without exception, are, are, are plant biologists or agronomists of some sort or another. And they bring us um, uh, contact with, 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 with real plants in the ground that we can, we can use and process to try and make chemicals and, and fuels and so on with. Biofuels research is important because uh, for, for two reasons, one of which is that um, petroleum is, 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 has peaked and is, is, is running down to get any more petroleum out it's going to cost more energy to get out and that has impacts on the second issue which is to do with with climate change and greenhouse gas emissions so if you dig petroleum out of the ground or indeed carbon out of the ground in the form of coal and burn it you're releasing uh, stored carbon into the atmosphere if you use plants in principle uh, those plants are extracting carbon dioxide from the the atmosphere and then when you burn them to make energy, either in a fuel or just by burning them, you release carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. And so net, going around that cycle, there's very little net carbon dioxide going into the atmosphere, whereas there is net carbon dioxide going into the atmosphere from digging stuff out of the ground. The research the Porter Institute uh, is doing uh, is, is very widespread. It goes all the way from, uh, from plant biology, the sort of work that goes on in, in, in this lab, um, through research into microbes and fungi which are used to break the plants down so that you can get to the, the elemental constituents you need in order to make the fuels and the chemicals through to chemistry, chemical engineering to look at the entire process and to make the molecules that you want to make um, and uh, people working on instrumentation which will be used in this new technology to uh, to, to, to see what's going on in, a, for example, in a biorefinery where these products are made, um, through to people who are interested in, in um, the policy and, and, and the, 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 frankly, the politics of, of the whole field, which is very hot, and uh, which is all part of the equation of what processes will be acceptable and required by, uh, by society over the next 50 years or so. There's been a, 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 a good degree of, 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 of um, anti-press uh, for biofuels and um, it's, it's a very complicated field but in general what's been going on at the moment is, is, is effectively people from the, from the developed countries saying that biofuels will be damaging to uh, actually damaging in terms of greenhouse gases and also will cause problems to third world countries where many of the biofuel crops may be grown. Um, I think that most of this is actually polemical and the science is, is, is in general rather poor. Um, what we really need is to chart routes from where we are now to, uh, to a society in the next 30 years where we use renewable energy sources and biofuels will be one of those and why do I say that? Biofuels will be one of those because um, we have an entire distribution system for distributing petrol. That distribution system is the same as you'll need for, for biofuels. Um, so that's a huge cost both in terms of real economics and also in terms of greenhouse gas emissions actually. Um, there really in the immediate future there are not many many other options. Maybe batteries are another option but currently they don't take you very far. And in fact I would say even more powerfully that for the developing world there is no infrastructure that's reliable for them to charge batteries up for example so they are actually going to need these fuels I think for a significant amount of time so really what the I think the issue is is to try and chart the course from where we are now to an intermediate technology for, which may last for 50 years or 100 years based on biofuels which will not be damaging both in terms of greenhouse gases and in terms of um, people in third world countries and how they may grow those crops and I think that's per we, we believe that's perfectly possible.